serving a life sentence and I've been in custody for over 10 years and over the years I've uh, come to realize that a lot of residents here uh, become very lonely, isolated and uh, in some cases feel that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. This is my first time as a, as, as a prisoner in a prison and I was lost. So through my journey they've guided me, instructed me, helped me, motivated me. My experience being in this establishment has been one of helping people. And when I say helping people, helping both residents and staff. From where they were on their journeys, for whatever index offence they were in for, we don't, we don't judge them, but we make them better men. So when they get back uh, into society, so they are reformed. So I, I think uh, visiting family dementia is, is, is the very core of what rehabilitation means. That the only way that we can have residents uh, leave custody and have a, a good life on the outside, to have that strong family support on the outside, to have a good connect, uh, network of people around them. So for me, it's what we're here for, what we need to be doing. There's only so much you can encourage an individual to want to change, but obviously to hear from their mother, uh, their family, their children, to say, look, we're missing you, we need your home. Obviously, that's something that we can't do, but the families can. So to create the setting, that wonderful environment, to, to allow that to grow or happen, is, is, is extremely important to get that across to the residents. One of the best things for me in this job is to be able to be the person to create the environment for residents to have the paradoxical moments, that the moment they get to share with their family that for that split second that they're not in prison anymore, that they're just with their family, enjoying a family time together. So I'm a senior manager here and that means I oversee all of the offending behaviour programmes and I also oversee all of the peer mentoring work that goes on. So the mentoring schemes are for residents here who want to help other residents whilst they're on their sentence. So they will work to support others that are in custody, they'll provide them with some guidance, some information around the prison, how it works, and also support them in making changes ready for the future. We class them as being experts by experience, so we encourage them to bring their ideas forward. I will then oversee them just to make sure they're being done in a way that's safe for other residents and to provide them with the right training and qualifications to carry out those roles. So I oversee the, the drug rehabilitation unit. Um, on the unit we have a lot of interventions aimed at addressing offending behaviour linked to substance misuse. So the impact we have is, is pretty similar to what they have. You know, we govern the peer-led initiatives and ensure that it's, it's done in the right way and make sure that we get the outcomes that we do need to get as a, as a service. However, the peer-led initiatives are born out of the residents, it's their ideas, it's the, those who deliver those interventions. They go through training, like mental health training, uh, suicide and self-harm prevention training, substance misuse training. So as far as our involvement is, it's facilitating that improvement and facilitating those ideas. They have the experience to, to bring to the table, so we assist them and help them to do that. They make a massive difference to each other and we're there to support them along the way. A typical day will begin with a normal handover, so you find out what's going on during the night because the first thing we conduct in the morning are welfare checks. So you know, bright and early, wake up the, the residents, you know, we'll just greet them with a good morning, find out how they are, make sure everyone's okay, fit and well, and then the day pretty much begins from there. The wing workers come out and they prepare the unit for the, the programmes and interventions going on throughout the day because, again, it needs to be clean, tidy, respectable to, to make people feel respectable as well. Um, the interventions will begin in the morning time around nine o'clock and again a variety of them so there's more than one intervention running at any given time. Um, as I mentioned the peer-led initiatives run during the day, substance misuse have an office and a suit room in the back for therapeutic sessions and of course we still have the, the other aspects of, um, of custodial services so the healthcare unit would be open. Again, this is a contained unit because it's a drug recovery unit. It is a self-contained unit, which sort of means that everything that we need to function happens on this unit. We as staff and the residents very rarely need to leave the unit for any reason or any purpose, other than social visits, legal visits, or anything, um, hospital escorts, if we do need them for any, any hospital equipment or anything like that. Chaplaincy plays an integral part in the development and the support of both residents and staff within G4S. It's very important that we support, that we nurture and we develop all of our residents here. We have many examples of, of individuals who come here who mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally hit rock bottom 
and it's the, the job of the chaplaincy department to really lift these people back up and, and give them the, the strength to believe that mistakes have been made and we must learn from these mistakes and ensure that they never happen again and if we can help develop an individual in their faith and develop them in their spirituality we believe that that will help them whilst they spend their time in custody and also upon release. So chaplaincy's duty is to first of all provide pastoral support um, and, and we have a tailor-made pastoral support uh, initiative where we, we look at the, the needs of the individual and what area they're suffering in so we will have uh, assigned a chaplain or a volunteer from the chaplaincy department who will ensure that they meet this individual on a daily basis um, and to talk and, and sometimes it's just about talking it's just about talking and listening to somebody else's problems we are very blessed here within G4S that we have a multi-faith team of chaplains um, represent many other major world faiths from, from Islam to Christianity to Sikhism to Hinduism just to name a few. Um, men and women of, of real experience, uh, of great calibre. So when we bring all of this experience together of so many individuals, uh, so much knowledge, so much experience, it really helps to, to support the people that we're here to support. And if we can do if we can inspire people, if we can really help pick the vulnerable up and give them that strength to understand and accept that mistakes have been made and we can utilize this time to better ourselves, to strengthen ourselves physically, mentally, spiritually, that can only be better for them and for their families as well. I've spent a lot of time working with people in prison and near the point of release, you can always see that sense of anxiety and it's difficult for the men and that's why I call them the experts by experience because it's not until they share what that experience, what it feels like. I don't think um, as workers that we quite understand because we can't put our feet in their shoes because they're no longer in prison. They now have to think we're leaving. How do we reintegrate back into community? How do we reintegrate back to our families? What do we need to offer to people coming out of prison to ensure that they reintegrate and more importantly to ensure that they do not reoffend? And that's where I like the combination of Restart Enterprise and the Resettlement Service working. It's like a marriage because I think there's a prison community but there's the external community and resettlement works when we know, when we figure out how to merge both together. So we do the resettlement aspect in the prison and then we look at how we do the through the gate aspect to ensure that people don't reoffend. Do this, do that, like guided me, like whatever I was getting lost, guided me to, to make, from, from a boy, made a man. So uh, they've been there through, through every single step, every time I, uh, I feel low, there's always one there available who we can just go and sit with, take time out. Officers can play a great part with regards to making the quality of life for a resident within any establishment by first being able to listen to that individual and see the man, see the man, not the prisoner. Because we're all individuals that have made bad choices yeah, along the way to end up in here. But it's about helping those individuals to make better choices and self-reflect on the choices that they've made in the past, you know, and change, you know, and correct, you know, going forward. And, you know, to be able to coexist in here together as residents and staff, we have to work together.